Good evening to everybody and welcome from Andrea Schmidt and me in Italy to our today's conference uh, performance as a form of reflection and welcome to Su Wei, uh, curator and art critic from Beijing and Hong Kong. We are very happy to have you here and, uh, and to get the chance to get an insight in, into your reflection about um, the situation of art in, in China and uh, especially about the role of performance art or of performance yeah. uh, in the last two decades in China. And, um, <laughs> yes, uh, I want to say something because Su Wei it has a special relationship to Berlin it's just, and to Germany. Actually, he was doing his PhD degree partly in, in Berlin about um, Pao Zilan uh, in Germany. And then um, and it's the first time he comes back to Berlin after going back to China, where he got very much involved into the contemporary art scene recently. And um, so Su Wei belongs to a young, the younger generation of art critics within China um, who are very engaged in reflecting or opening up new perspectives uh, about uh, historic or the, his the recent history of Chinese contemporary art in the 80s and 90s and which for his generation already is part of, of the history and um, um, yes and <laughs> and I wanted to say that yes Suwe's so research seeks to question the given historical narrative in order to animate and to refresh a historical discourse. And this praxis forms a basis for the self-understanding of young art practitioners in China. So Suwe so understands the artistic practice as a continuous practice of reflection. And in today's talk, we will hear about how these reflections drive the young artists towards questioning the existing context of the art scene. And now Andreas will say some words about his some biographical notes, but we are done we, we get into the topic. Thank you very much. I will just add some very little information, but I have to I really can stress what you just said because it's very interesting, I just came back from Beijing and I happened to see a really a young generation of art critics and also journalists from art magazines who are really maybe 25 to 30 years old and absolutely professionally uh, do their job. I'm really uh, very amazed about this young generation who, are, who is really deeply involved in yeah, looking at the contemporary art as well as looking from a historical point of view. It's very, very interesting what's going on in China at the moment. Um, so Wei, as you just said, is, uh, is an independent art critic and curator, and he's con uh, constantly contributing to magazines like Independent Criticism and Leap. I have one magazine here, if someone is interested in, you can be uh, uh, very uh, invited to have a look. It's also Su Wei's article in there, and they are doing the wonderful work, I have to say, it's really great. Um, and he, uh, Su Wei did a very interesting job in, in the OCT in Shenzhen, it's in the contemporary art terminal. He co-curated the seventh Shenzhen Sculpture Biennale, Accidental uh, Message, Art is not a system, not a world. And recently, in 2013, he curated, I'm not involved in aesthetic progress, a rethinking of performance in Star Gallery Beijing. And in Mag Magician Space in Beijing, he uh, curated, I'm not, not, not Zhengzhou. Uh, also recently, in 2013, maybe you can talk a little yeah. bit also about your, your practice in yeah. the, this year. Yeah. It would be very interesting. Uh, you did a lot also with Carol Lu in Shenzhen, mm -hmm. 
Yeah, uh, and uh, was one of the curatorial team of Little Movements, mm -hmm. Self-Practice in Contemporary Art, presented at OCT. Yeah. So I would just say uh, we are very happy to have you here. And uh, I yeah. want to add some, yeah. some word. And he was, Jube was translating this year, actually, yeah. Hans Belting's book yeah. uh, for, uh, into Chinese, which is I don't know if it already came, <laughs> it came <laughs> out, that, but uh, this uh, according to me. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay. So, let's start. Si, si. <laughs> uh, thank you very much, uh, Binya and Andreas. <laughs> Thank you for the very informative introduction of me and my project and my thinking of performance art in China. Um, yeah, I actually I'm I'm neither a uh, an art, art historian nor a very sophisticated art critic who has been uh, involved in the very specific, uh, specific circle of performance art in China. I uh, I started to write and to uh, curate actually several years ago. Um, but at that time, I got this, this very strange and instinct feeling that the Chinese performance art, or the Chinese art itself, has been consumed too widely, internationally, also locally. But there's something, something missing in this kind of development of Chinese artist discourse. And um, I, uh, in 2013, this year, I happened to meet uh, to meet a, a gallerist who is interested in a rethinking of what has happened and into the our our very historical context. And I, I think I can. At that time, I started to think maybe I can contribute in this this field, this, this specific field. And uh, I started to do my research and realized this this uh, this exhibition. Uh, I'm not involved in aesthetic progress in April 2013 this year. So um, the talk is uh, on performance, but I I don't want to talk too much before I can show you a, a very interesting piece of artist Ma Liu Ming's performance at the. Uh, uh, Istanbul Binali, 2001. Uh, his wall, I think s some of you, a lot of you, maybe already very familiar with Ma, Ma Liu Ming's uh, practice. He always dresses, dresses himself or undresses himself as a female nude, and uh, he took. Uh, he, he has been he has been realizing in this figure sin, uh, since to, uh, 1993 to uh, 20, 2003, I think, 10 years. Um, at that time, as, us, as he uh, participated in the uh, Istanbul Binali, he, uh, he, tried, uh, he, he realized a project in the center of a, of a park. And um, uh, as always, he uh, took a uh, sleeping pill medicine and slept in the center of this park. And uh, you, you will see later uh, in the park, there, will, there are lots of chairs with the participa participant's artist's name on it. So I think I should start with this video before I start my talk.
This video is about ten, ten or eleven minutes. We can skip a little bit so that we don't run out of time. The guy who just sat next to him is the uh, artist Lu Hao, who, who was the curator of the Chinese pavilion in 2009.
思わせる、うん、ちょっと待ってよ。This talk is on performance.、Uh, I try to、uh, propose a substitution for the traditional term performance art.、Uh, in the past and even today, we have abused the power of art history in China to define things. And we have simplified the boundaries of performance art, thereby、uh, draining all this radicality or imagination from relevant aesthetic discourse. So, per performance is an art. Directed towards an audience, is burdened by imaginations and expectations of the self and the audience. But how, how does a performance artist identify or struggle with or replicate the relations between art, artist, and viewer? How does he or she internalize these relations in practice? So, this is not modern, modernist discussion about medium, but an、uh, attempt. Attempt to go deep within the process of art practice itself. So, like I said,、uh, it, is, it is a review of、uh, performance place within the Chinese contemporary history, uh, 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 but also a conversation about how we treat history as well as the urgent need to re examine our historical views.、Uh, in my thinking, I consciously put aside a general cultural or philosophical discussion. To focus on the artists and their works as work site and art and their anxieties during their practice. And in this way,、uh, I hope to connect the past and the present of performance art and reveal the hidden connections between artists.、Uh, another thing I, I, I want to say is that in, this, in, my, in my project or in my research, I have, I have never.、Uh, Involved any the so called socially engaged、uh, art practices because it's not just because it's、uh, irrelevant to my topic, but it also shows a doubt of me, of the general,、uh, of me for the general understanding in China that art could h a s a direct, almost, connect, almost,、uh, almost direct connection with the audience and public. Because from My point of view, if you work or your practice starts not from the internal of the art, then you'll be facing a lot of ris ris uh, risky uh, 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 circumstances, like you can go into hollowness,、uh, hollowness, or maybe you can just be too fast、uh, consumerized by the、uh, art, art market. So I will, maybe I will go deep in,、um, in this kind of socially. Uh, engage art, but only by putting emphasis not on their social meaning, but on the problems all these artists face during their practice. I think may maybe some of you are familiar with、uh, one of these uh, uh, very uh, inspiring uh, books by Claire Bishop, Artificial Health, published last,、uh, last year, in which she uh, uh, intensively. Uh, 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 deals with the、uh, history of the、uh, participatory art practices in, the, in Europe and America. But now I will start, I will give you a little guide now about the background that, uh, 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 that I do this research for, uh, 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 for our historical context. It is a guide into the so called medium anxiety、uh, in China. In the Chinese contemporary art scene. So, performance art as a, as a formal concept has been in China for about three decades now. Over these past 30 years, people have,、uh, have been using the term behavioral art in Chinese it's Xing Wei Yi Shu, to describe the concept.、Uh, in fact, around the time of the 1985、uh, new wave, performance art began entering your mainstream consciousness along with Chinese modernism. As is Is the case with modernism,、uh, the art histories and cultural backgrounds that give shape to performance art、uh, with a hybrid and disruptive appearance of geography and space and time.、Uh, Chinese modernism takes its roots from the Western conceptual art, 
tradition prevalent since the 1960s and is nourished by, uh, by an amalgamation of Western modern art history. Uh, its development, development, along with the other revolutions in Chinese culture, was varying degrees burned into the very fever of Chinese contemporary art. So the term performance art, in particular, has been used in very broad strokes in China. Uh, its application has not been consciously distinguished from body art, uh, from performing arts, happening art, or life art. So typically, when the, when the human body of the artist's own body, or the artist's own body appears in an artwork, or when a particular piece uh, takes shape or an event, it is broadly classified as performance art. So this rough but very interesting transplantation of this, all these different forms of art into our creative at atmosphere is paired also with the action of creating something out of nothing, but also at times involves very deep introspection. I think this, um, these different styles of art were not, uh, were not distinguished, and in this situation, a richness and complexity presents itself. I think this is, could be very interesting for all the art historians if they want to review our, his, our history. It's, it's kind of this entanglement of art with, with the social, spiritual uh, developments. And therefore, since the very beginning, the very history of the medium, of this uh, performance art as a medium, as used to describe performance art, uh, entails a challenging undertaking that is far from completion. In addition uh, to transplantation, reorientation, and self wavering this descriptive history, um, a history of aesthetics, of course, has undergone its own self-historization and standardi uh, standardization. So relatively speaking, this history focuses on making definitions. It's much greater than its attention to actual pra practices. And the art historian's language is either given a socially and culturally critical overtone, or is important uh, or ignorant to any artistic creation that ventures outside cultural conflicts and established ideology. Uh, in 1993, I think, the critic Huang Zhuan, who was the, for, uh, the former director of the Shenzhen OCT, once wrote about the certain trends in Chinese contemporary art since the 1990s. And I quote, this trend possesses a certain level of cultural introspection and a certain critical strength, but either from its critical nature or, or the visual method methodology that it assumes, it hasn't shaken its old school modernist roots, which is manifested in various forms of, uh, of nihilism and cynicism, of nihilis nihilism or the cynicism. Clearly, for the Chinese avant garde, to assume the more liberated role of the avant-garde and the critic, it must first undergo an inner transformation in its visual methodology and inherent political leaning. In other words, we must move from modernism to contemporaryism. So uh, Huang, uh, Huang Zhuan's viewpoints may, uh, may not be directed at performance art and the uh, aesthetic developments that arose from its introduction, but they are still highly relevant. Because in the language used to de describe performance art, this so-called old school modernism is manifested as an endorsement for the, artistic, uh, for the aesthetics of modernist art, an irrational respect for the meaning hidden in the visual elements, and the, and the uh, uh, mythicization of certain well-known artists. So by Huang Zhuan, when he talks about the nihilism, I think he refers to the, uh, to the cultural shaping of Chinese contemporary art, to the, to the, uh, to the dominant discourse of, the, uh, of Chinese identity discussion uh, in the 90s. And by cynicism, as all you, you always know, the, uh, uh, the, uh, the, the uh, uh, definition uh, brought up by Li Xianting, the uh, Cynical realism, 
and uh, with which art history depicts works like Fang Yijun's works as a connection or quick and direct response to Chinese reality. So Huang Zhong criticizes all this discourse, and uh, he, he, he also implies that it lacks uh, understanding of the actual work that goes into the creation or into the art practice or the drive for equality between our history and artistic practice. So maybe this is maybe too theoretical, but I will go forward with some examples uh, of the performance art pieces in, in, our, uh, in our history, and you will know, get a better idea of what is, the, what is this, uh, this, this gap between the uh, dominant art historical discourse and the art practice itself. Uh, in 1994, Beijing's East Village, known as Dongchun, it was actually a, a, a garbage dump uh, outside, uh, in, in the center of the Ch Chaoyang district. Artists uh, like Ma Liu Ming, whose work you, you have just seen there, uh, or Zhu Ming and Zhang Huan, living in very poverty and at the fringe of society, they had started to to, uh, they had experimented with their bodies in such a way that pushes performance art to something of a climax. And the three artists shared one thing in common. Their works were driven by bodily instinct and an and innate understanding of art. Uh, I think this is in, in the year of 1993, as Gilbert and George, the artist group, visited Beijing uh, Ma Liu Ming began to occasionally appear in his, in his work in the nude, uh, eventually transforming into a, a semblance of, their female, of the female nude. It was common for people to explain his work through ideological and cultural criticism, uh, and due to the so-called authority of the Western art history from which side from which yeah, said criticism, uh, criticism arose, such interpretation was widely uh, accepted and disseminated. To be sure, they catered to, uh, to ask concurrent commercialization and industrialization and led to the subs uh, subservience of their production to confining mechanisms. Uh, fast forward 20 years to today, when this way of explaining, explaining art has lost its effectiveness, even though some still tirelessly continue to manufacture conversations along these apparently highly theoretical lines, we seem to have lost our link to history. Uh, Ma Liu Ming had once described his inspir inspiration for his alter ego, this Fen Ma Liu Ming you have seen in, in the video, he said, the concept of gender neutrality aims to reveal an awkward position. People judge each other using such cultural properties as clothing rather than the innate properties of the other party. Our materialistic goals often reflect on our spiritual leanings. He said further, when I enter a role, I, lost, I lose myself. I said this, this statement is very interesting. It reveals Ma Liu Ming's um, um, multi-dimensional sensitivity to the body, to the artist's human body, and to his own body. So it's all entangled within uh, one body there. So he sees it much more than a mere instrument or symbol. He sees the body much more than a mere uh, instrument or sim symbol. And this simply small opening reflex and authenticity within the artist's world. Um, what we glean from this one minor statement is very rich, I think, and it is very richness that outruns the uh, dis uh, discursive potential of aesthetics. Um, the fate of having once practiced standardized, labeled, or or, or uh, disseminated and viewed under the pretext of modernist history before not only Ma Liu Ming, but also other artists who has 
labeled in performance art, including uh, Li Yongbin, Wang Jin, Zhu Fadong, Song Dong, uh, Luo Zidan, Yan Lei, and Shanghai-based artists like Zhao Chuan, Ding Yi, Qin Yifeng, Song Haidong, Zhang, uh, or the Hangzhou-based artist group Pang Society, Zhang Pei Li, Geng Jian Yi, uh, uh, and the uh, Guangzhou-based artist Chen Xiaoxiong, Lin Yinlin, uh, Liang Juhui, who uh, are, the are the members of the uh, Big Elephant, Big Tail Elephant Group, and Zheng Guo Gu, and even Xia Men Da Da, just to uh, name a few. I think I will go, we, we can move to some cases that I have, I have dealt with and in this project. Yeah, I do. This is a work from Chen Xiaoxun, uh, a member of, uh, of uh, the uh, uh, former uh, Big Tail Elephant Group based in Guangzhou. And several of Chen Xiaoxun's work uh, in the early 90s that include performance elements such as uh, Seven Days of Silence, this one, and then the uh, 20, uh, 72 and a half hours of electricity consumption attempt to question performance through concept, conceptual art. They also express the existence of an individual coping with both the boredom, the boredom long while, of living in a de developing city, Guangzhou, and his yearning for relevance. So um, I think these two works, this one and this one, are his uh, early pieces of work revolved around the issue of time. Uh, at that time, Chen Xiaoxing told me um, that he, he was quite interested in Albert Einstein's theory about space and time. He thought that if, uh, if time could work up, I, he would like to uh, cut out a portion from daily life. This is his diary. He said, through this segment of time, life would become an art you could observe, where art would really become a situation of the everyday. And in the beginning of the 1991, uh, he uh, bought a few 10 meter rolls of plastic fabric and used it to, uh, to partition a space with curves that produced a, 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 a labyrinth you had to negotiate with in order to find the exit. You, have, you can also see the part of it. But every day he would paint until the fabric eventually turned to black. So uh, in this way, his life he said his life turned into a visible performance. Every day he recorded a new date, uh, which would differ from the silent and concise numbers of the uh, uh, Japan, uh, Jap Japanese uh, artist On Kawara. In fact, the silence went beyond those seven days and actually engaged time beyond this duration. And the next Next, what I will show you is the, uh, another work from Chen Xiaoxun, the uh, uh, 72 and a half hours of electricity consumption made in 2000, uh, 1992. He uh, produces, produces several human shape, and the human shape was uh, formed using, uh, uh, using this, uh, this uh, colorful uh, light tube that conveyed long, uh, loneliness as well as the uh, consumption of energy. Um, he said at, at that time he wants to, the work was it paid a homage to the large nice stores of the southern China, but also to the artists that he has, uh, he has been reading from all these western catalogs, he, which he uh, 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 very admire of, like artist Dan Flavin or Bruce Nauman. At that time, Chen Xiaoxiong and his fellow artists um, uh, they drank heavily in those places and those days. Uh, and uh, maybe I think Shan Di know, knows this better in this very small bar called Humayi, the Red Ants. And this is so the work is kind of a kind of a homage and, and their, their daily life. And this colored lights were the materials found from this kind of life. Uh, uh, from this cheap existence, they made illusions of how to steal time. I think, uh, from the picture, maybe you cannot see very clear, but in the background, uh, 
in the background there, there's a wood board, and Chen Shaoxun uh, recorded on the board the uh, uh, electricity consumption every hour before it's all occupied with numbers and dates. Uh, every hour recorded by the electrometer was a meaningless performance to consume time and to rebel against a universal concept that time must be filled with meaning. And meanwhile, an, uh, one of his fellow uh, artists, Lin Yilin, also the, uh, a member of the Big Tail Elephant Group, his series of work involving bricks attempt to uh, uh, dissipate the meaning of historical constructs using the banality of daily elements. And he uses, like you can see in the picture, he uses tons of bricks to build up a wall uh, on one side of a very busy main street in Guangzhou, uh, in the new town of Guangzhou. Uh, he then takes some bricks down from one end of the wall and move them to the other end, and where he, where he uh, piled them up again. So repeating the same gestures for hours, he moves the whole wall to the middle of the street and finally to the opposite side, uh, opposite side of the street. And this hours long labor not only turns a stable wall into a moving one, but also disrupts the heavy traffic. Uh, this action creates moments of void in the turbulent flow of urban life. And Li Yilin's void, and this void allows those rare moments in which one can contempl contemplate the city's fundamental changes. This is what happened in Guangzhou around 1992, 1993. And in Beijing, you'll see this. This is one of artist Zhang Huan's famous work where he, he was hung uh, under, under, under the, the roof of his studio in uh, East Village, Dongchun. I consciously picked up some, some working in progress uh, pictures to, to show you that at that time, even though there was no art system, there was no uh, uh, hierarchy of, of, of art market there, but they, they have started very consciously to record and document all their uh, activities and performances. And this very famous picture has been always described as a confrontational, uh, 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 confrontational fight against the central power or central government. But this kind of discourse, to describe it like this, um, has been actually con consumerized by, by, by the art market as soon as it appears in, as soon as Zhang Huan appeared in New York in 1996. But I think very interesting of his work is that he never moves in the performance side. This is always tied up or, or, or shows, shows himself nude, but he, he rarely moves. And this has something to do with his, his aesthetic background actually that which is which was actually ignored by the art history he started painting for a long time before he moved, moved to beijing and that's why he chose to to let himself appear in a still picture instead of moving around like ma Liu, like sometimes ma Liu Ming or zhu ming does it uh, the two artists of, also from Dongchun. Um, I think I, I can, I can go, go further with, with this kind of uh, description of dominant art his, history about the uh, very well-known pieces of, of Zhang Huan, Ma Liu Ming, and some other artists. And this is one of his other works. And then artist Wang Jin. Uh, his wedding with a donkey. And another picture of Ma Liu Ming prepare, preparing a, a realize, uh, for, for realization of a performance in Dongchun. And you can see all these photographs there. Mm -hmm. 
an artist Sun Dong, who just participated in the uh, uh, documenta ten, right? In this year, uh, last year, ten. Okay. Uh, I think this, this is also a, a, a quite a famous work and a, a, a very fundamental work uh, of his practice. Actually, the work the work is titled as the leak. This is about uh, because Sun Dong is a is an uh, artist who, who was born in Beijing in the uh, very old city area where where is occupied Hu Tong or this Hu Tong, these small streets there, and he uh, he kind of used all these uh, plastic bags hanging alongside a uh, Hu Tong Hu Tong wall, and inside of of, of the bags there they were there there are these ices ices there, and it was in summer, so the ice starts soon to melt, and the, uh, the water just leaks from the bags. And Sun Dong tries to tries to um, to to present a kind of meaningless, but uh, uh, but uh, simultaneous, simultaneous, uh, simultaneously of filled with human touch and actually melancholic. If we com uh, if we compare this with Chen Shaoxiong or Lin Yilin's work, this is another quality of our practice that cannot be described or that defined by the uh, cultural uh, discourse. And looking back to the art history, uh, or uh, histor uh, historical discourse in China, the aesthetics of the, of the body was shaped and con continuously mentioned. And this process uh, entailed facing problems, anxieties, and even included specific details of art practice. But what was missing there was a more intimate thread leading to the individual. It is maybe it is worth emphasizing that these threads of narratives of art history are not simply opposi uh, oppositional relationships, as we cannot merely place this within the perspective of a paradigm shift using today's outlook. So the body and the object, and the body and politics, the body and the audience. Even if all these issues uh, were being discussed and created openness and extending the space of art uh, by producing an artistic uh, discourse, but there still have been a very functional appeal that these discourses try to hide, as namely uh, the, the attempts to transplant and translate language from the outside of the traditional Chinese art history while at the same time establishing an aesthetic mechanism that can be expanded for new uses. And meanwhile, plenty of not, uh, noteworthy examples and uh, 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 ruminations of performance works emerge in various places all around China, like you can see in Guangzhou or in Shanghai. And due to, this, uh, due to historical reasons, many practice uh, practices that were actually more related to performance art. Uh, this work has, yeah, so this work has emerged in places such as Beijing, Shanghai, Guangzhou, and Wuhan. And from medium spe specificity to the level of performan performativity and the process of formula formalization had already began to be put into question. And through varying degrees, they similarly, uh, similarly touched on fundamental uh, areas uh, occupied by the practice of concept, conceptual art. And that's why I, uh, th that's the reason why I curated uh, the exhibition project I'm not involved in aesthetic progress. First of all, it's an attempt to approach a dual notion of presence and absence of aesthetics. It is presence in geographically Beijing, or a located Beijing, or the imaginary art center, where the discourse of the ideological confrontation with the central power shaped itself and were dominant. But it's also absence for other uh, various ambitious and radical practices in, uh, uh, inside and outside of the so-called art center. This is, at the same time, 
both about performance and its medium, but conversely, it is also a discussion that attempts to go beyond the confines of its present discourse. So by drawing this parallel to the practice of artists, um, I think my research will uh, uh, avoid being entangled in, uh, in different roles that um, this practice has played in exist existing aesthetic uh, discourses. And this research recognized the anxieties of these artists and uh, of these artists and the different attempts to negotiate their own cultural by background, knowledge, identity, and other conventional forms. So the aim of this project um, is to raise questions about the accuracy of critical discourse and the distance to art, in addition to raising questions considering its own critical uh, 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 to its own crit critical uh, p potentials. I'm showing here the uh, ins installation installation view of some some of the some of the uh, uh, pieces because it, it was re realized in a very old fabric uh, space, and uh, you can. You can you can almost touch this kind of quality of the rough quality of this space. It's void, very rough, and the the, the the floor is not cleaned. Um, I in this this space I try to uh, blur the uh, mechanic uh, separation of generations or or regions. So I kind of uh, mixed up all the all the uh, all the performance pieces I I, I selected uh, into a one whole. A piece so it appears like a a a, a recontextualized the history uh, 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 of Chinese performance art. You can see here the uh, this is the work of young artist Chen Zhou up against the old work of Ma Liu Ming's famous picture with mm, Jiebot and George, and also his uh, his uh, sleeping pieces. You have just seen there, and also Liu Ding's work is here. Chen Shaoxun's consumption, electricity consumption work is here, and uh, Li Yan's live performance at the other corner. So I'm going to uh, name some further examples to uh, defend my my my, my thesis. Uh, I'm now going to uh, talk about something uh, of artist and. Uh, a pretty Zhao Chuan who will be invited for the next talk, right? So it's about in this case I will I will I will I will discuss how do we deal with the history. This is case study of Zhao Chuan. And in the year of nineteen eighty six, Zhao Chuan and his fellow artists uh, Song Haidong and uh, Yang Hui uh, has organized a show named the M Show, the alphabet M. Uh, this is a M conceptual art performance show. Though it is more complex in reality, uh, what is important is to understand the values or methodologies and aesthetics this discourse so surrounding the artwork. So this M Show. Uh, that Zhao Chuan and his fellow artists organized is a performance-themed exhibition revealed some big differences between artistic practice in Shanghai and Beijing, as well as, well as the concerns and desires of the individual artists. It also created tension and conflict between the, uh, the history of art and the study of aesthetics. Uh, as someone who took part, uh, Zhao Chuan talks about the actual relationship between the I'm show and the creative and artistic milieu of the time, and describing an artistic event which was imperfect and felt rather temporary, which separates itself from the normal historical narrative. And the I'm show, the I'm show uh, brings to light the problems of how to define performance art and of a greater relevance still, of how to view the place in the history of a one-off creative event uh, or artistic, ha artistic happening. It is actually clearly related to the his historical development, or are we afraid to concede 
the significance of some the so-called disposable, useful, unclear, or incomplete works. I did a conversation with Zhao Chuan, and uh, I published this uh, conversation in, in, also in that leap issue. And in our conversation, Zhao Chuan said he, would, he wouldn't characterize the aesthetic pro process uh, the way I did it, because he thinks this is a question for art historians. He think we are all inside the aesthetic process. So art history is extracted from it. For example, why can something in Beijing be included in art history? What sort of power relations does that reflect? And how did the academics of the uh, time uh, of the time view the power relations uh, in the country we live in? And why do they choose to write about Beijing, not Shanghai? And could it be that they want to be, uh, they want to stay in Beijing to do their writing. So all these questions, as far as Zhao Chuan uh, was concerned, it is not um, an aesthetic progress. It is an uh, an art historical progress. How to about how to grasp a place in history and how to create or build an historical narrative. And I think that one of the very interesting things he 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 shared he shared with me is that. Uh, perhaps in southern China or in the southern cities of, of China, modernity had penetrated individual lives. The politics is different to the rough view of politics and the body up north. And their understanding of the body is very different. And Zhao Chuan argues, is everything outside Beijing provincial? For, those, for people like Zhao Chuan, this topic has always been an oppressive one. He is particularly sensitive about analysts, uh, especially when they talk about Zhao Chuan and their performances and where they are being placed in the narrative. Uh, China's first, this is a, I think it's, uh, there's a, a, a background knowledge that we have to, to, to know before we, uh, we, we, we uh, go deep in Zhao Chuan's case. In China, the Chinese, uh, Chinese first academic study of Western art history uh, was uh, the Western style art education at the time of uh, Liu Hai Su uh, and others in Shanghai. Or, or earlier still, the art teaching brought by the missionaries in Tushaban in Shanghai, where, for example, the sculptor uh, Zhang Chongren came from. In the 1920s, a large group, including Lin Fengmian, Xu Beihong, who went abroad to study. And the Western art movement of the 1930s and modernism was brought back to China by them, not by, 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 by the other intellectuals who had spent a lot of, uh, lot of time in, in Japan or in Europe, but by the artists who, who were studied there. And this trend remained present right through to the 1970s and 80s. For Shanghai, at least, or at least Zhao Chuan thinks this is very key. Uh, as for the M show here, uh, I think uh, we should know that, uh, first of all, Zhao Chuan is now the curator. Uh, he's just one of the participants' artists at that time. At that time, I, they didn't even have uh, the concept of curator, actually. Because, uh, but because Zhao Chuan had written about the show, the M show, he becomes some, some sort of a spokesman for, for the M show. And Yang Hui, artist Yang Hui, was very central figure of, M, of the M artist collective and the source of his motivation. And Sun Hai Dong, the other one, and Zhao Chuan were quite close to Yang Hui, and they were also uh, uh, several. Other guys, other artists like uh, Gong Jianqing, uh, who had painted with him before, and each person brought a very few preference they consider suitable to uh, to the group. Uh, Fifteen and sixteen artists planned the show for about three months. Uh, it is a very spe uh, specific time of a time of period in in the nineteen eighty six, because in the late of nineteen uh, eighty six. There was large-scale student demonstrations in Shanghai, 
and by coincidence, the M show took place at the height of the student movement. Uh, uh, in the Workers' Cultural Palace in, 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 in Hongkou district of Shanghai. So at that time, as they, uh, as they, at, at the day of the uh, opening of this show, traffic was uh, disrupted in many places, not only the city center. And later, when the police were uh, investigating the, uh, the, incident, the incident, they had to insist, the artists of the IM show have to insist that they had nothing to do with the student demonstrations. And at that, at that time, uh, it was estimated that 200 people attended the, uh, the show. The venue had a, 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 a kind of stage, but uh, did not have any particular uh, seating ar ar arrangement for, for audiences, so just a few chairs. Uh, some people sat and some stood, and the artist had a running order. So just, it's like when one person had finished uh, uh, the performance, the next started. And now about the work in the M show here. Um, some people uh, had, a, had a visual element to the work, but accompanied it uh, with a soundtrack as though it was a little, uh, uh, a little uh, 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 theatrical piece, actually. But all, all, all of this showed a lack of experience and compassion. I think this, this is a very interesting point because um, it shows the real the real situation, the real contact that before they they will be described by the art history, and in in the in the description of the art history, all these works and all these pieces appear to be very mature or even with a goal in it. So for a lot of for a lot of uh, of the participating artists there, this was a just a one of activity. Once it's finished, they would move to other work. So it was not an ongoing project, but for lots of them, it was just for fun. Um, they never think about uh, what to do afterwards, and uh, they, they, they were not under any pressure at that time. So looking back today, whether or not, it's, it's, it, it made you more of an artist open to question. For most people, that show uh, was to do uh, with youths and with the with the, the age, you did things for fun and because they were crazy. Um, another thing Zhao Chun shared with me uh, is that as for the 1980s, it was really about the body. In the, in the 1980s, up until then, the body had not been the individual private business. So. One of the very central uh, 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 inspiring works in, in the M show was Yang Hui's work, Four Minutes of Silence. Uh, it, it was originally created uh, for, for Wang Guoqing's, uh, Wang Guoqing's fa father, who had just passed away a few weeks ago. In the 1970s, uh, as all the Chinese people remember uh, that when, when Chinese leaders were dying, one after the other, uh, the other, and in quick success, uh, succession, and for for each, um, we had to observe three minutes of silence. All the uh, older generation recognized this phrase, and what should you do when an ordinary person dies? Ask Yang Hui. Observe four minutes of silence. He answered himself. I believe it was. Um, I think it was the, it was to directly express the uh, the artist's personal thanks and wishes. The body really was used as a weapon, and this form of expression is very skillful. It really speaks and has a human element. And next to it, the naked body, Zhao Chuan argues, seem too simple. So interestingly, when they when the art, participating artists in the M show, when they came across the word performance, they knew it. They knew it meant to do something, to not perform. And to not perform means to not clearly use a set of te techniques to change or adjust an action. During this 
Uh, doing this would be a performance, instinct, artistic way of thinking. They sense something related to the contemporary approach. So some of the works were actually quite perform performative, actually. Um, it's like, like this one, artist uh, Li Zhuming uh, wrote, uh, wrote out his diary. It's the, uh, the start time was such and such, and the time on such and such a day. He uh, and he also wrote the start of the event and uh, the end time of his performance. So there will be a lot of things to, to show. We, we kind of run, off, run out of time. But this this works. This is another work by uh, by 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 Song Song Hai Dong. He uses he used using an axe to cut a, a painting and then burn it into fire. So all these works redefine the relationship between the body and the time. Once you leave painting behind, what can you do? It's the first thing you must do to figure out how to remove your body from the everyday. Um, I think this is not for Zhao Chuanskei because uh, I have still some other uh, individual cases to share with you. So I think I can quote uh, 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 several sentences from Zhao Chuan to finish this part. He said, looking back, how should we view the M show? One question is, what are we actually talking about? It was an entirely the so-called Cao Gen event, grassroots event. I don't know how to translate this. Uh, common people event, a popular uprising, if you will. All across the country, hundreds of artists were taking part in sim similar events and exhibitions. But afterwards, why did the, did the discussion turn into such an elitist conversation? The, the 85 new wave did not take place in the upper class of society. Those artists were poor, barely well enough off to buy the clothes on their backs. They were on the edges of society, in dire streets. Want to talk about this as if it was about high culture? Fuck that. That's Zhao Chuan's beautiful saying of his, his attitude toward the art, uh, dominant art, art, art historical uh, discourse. And now we move to the current art practices of the young generations. Uh, in my consideration, uh, there's a shift from the reflection of body like they have done in the 90s uh, to the uh, uh, reflection of art practice. This is a new but yet old generation because it's notable that some of the works uh, being produced now uh, using the artist's human bodies as their subject matter. Not the body itself, but the artist's body as their subject, uh, subject matter. And this kind, this kind of views uh, are, it's becoming connected again to our history and offer an important referential point to ask quest for, uh, for introspection. Uh, I will name a, few, name a few examples. Um, in the practice of Chen Zhou, uh, Hu Xiangqian, Li Ran, Li Qi, Liu Ding, Yan Xing, and they, all these guys, uh, they followed the instincts and desires of the of the art uh, of the artist and symbolized the artist's position uh, within the art profession, art history, and in the here and now, as well as present their attitudes when interacting with different forms of the so-called the other or the under. This is uh, Li, Yan's, Li Yan's work realized in 2012, the month Saint Victor, where uh, Zezang uh, 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 painted a lot of uh, 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 landscape uh, paintings there. In this work, Li Ran, uh, because Li Ran is this kind of a funny guy uh, who used to uh, 
mimicry people around him. So in this, this piece, he dressed himself as a voice actor and uh, played a lot of roles he made. Uh, he changed his tones and displays a, 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 a script he, he, he wrote him, himself. And the script is a, about some scenarios of, uh, of uh, uh, life partners who fall in love with each other. There's a monologue of his own thinking of the art history and the art industry, but also quotation of his of uh, other roles in the art in the art industry about art and the market. And in, his, in one of his other work, which was shown uh, last this year, right? This year in Hakavi, uh, the uh, the work was titled uh, "In Beyond Geography." He uh, he assumes the role of a uh, 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 a national ge a geographic TV show host via Discovery Channel, and completes an adventure employing the set formats and tactics used to keep audience engaged and not get distracted. So Li Ran, as the host, uh, encounters an so-called Aboriginal primitive tribe and attempts to interact with them. Most critics, this is very interesting, uh, interestingly, most critics see this as a, a irony of the colonialism. But actually what Li Ran deals with is that he wants to discuss what is the actual subject matter that artists has to deal with in the work. Is it something that made up by the artists themselves or is about something about a real confrontation with the reality? So how, how artists deal with the subject in art practice? Are these subjects based on their imagination, like the uh, primitive tribe shown in this work, and the actual confrontation with the reality? A reality that derives from not only the social and cultural context, but also the artistic context. And this context is, I think, for, not for me, for, for everybody, it's hard, it's very difficult to, to define, but exactly because of its indefinable nature, uh, it blurs the, the mechanics uh, separation of the social, cultural, and the artistic practice. Then in another work, he realized in, 2000, in this year, titled, I want to talk to you, but not all of you, he sheds light on on his feelings and perception of the reality of the art industry. Uh, as you can see there, uh, Li Ran uh, had done a, a private dialogue with the uh, curator of the show, Bilena Stirik, uh, uh, while preparing, preparing in this work for the exhibition. And during the dialogue, uh, they showed each other photos and documents that they were going to present in the exhibition. Uh, um, Li Ran uh, video recorded this conversation, but in the show, after he did some re-editing and making the video uh, into a simplified version, he featured, uh, the, uh, the, the, the video featured a, a conversation between a man with mental problems and his psychiatrist who tends to solve his problem through a bunch of medical terms. And in this version, uh, words such as spirit, hallucination, reality, fantasy are constantly mentioned, which uh, implies the way of perception of artists in front of the subjects they deal with. Then uh, I'm, I'm going to show you another piece of the young artist Chen Zhou. Uh, the work is titled My Favorite Artist Yu Honglei. Uh, it's a very short, uh, 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 short video. It's about uh, Chen Zhou, uh, the director or the, uh, the artist. He, uh, uh, he uh, invites his friends, also an artist, Yu Honglei, to tell a story 
of one of his exhibition experiments about Jeff Koons, while Yu Hong Lei uh, look at it, his own childhood pictures. Jeff的家電其中我最喜歡的一件作品是一張Jeff小時候的照片叫做 The New Jeff Quince 我曾经喜欢一个朋友跟我描述的展览。This is the voice of the artist in the age of Queen's Godard. John the New. 展览中有一些灯光和一些最普通不过的家电。他说他最喜欢的一件作品是一张Jeff Queen's小时候的照片。John the New Jeff Queen's. In the in this in this work in the my favorite artist Yu Honglei, Chen Zhou, the artist, uh, have has sensed uh, the question he has has to uh, deal with in his everyday uh, artistic practice, and namely to whom you speak with your with your work and how to characterize 
and understand the connections and relations between uh, artists and between their uh, different approach of art. And in this sense, I think artist Liu work is, uh, is also very inspiring because he treats art as a reflection, as a way of political practice. Um, I think maybe a, a little very short introduction of Liudin's thinking of art practice is, it could be very, it could be uh, uh, I think uh, interesting for us to know because of the way uh, he see art practice and the fascination fascination of art practice lies in the distance he said like lies in the distance and disconnection with the given reference and art systems. And this gap between the different uh, references and art system, uh, be between references and art systems and art practice itself, gives him the most anxiety and excite is excitement, um, producing moments of disapparition and feelings of powerlessness. Particularly in these moments, he reconsider the ideas of equality and art, art practice as in inspiration for deeper understanding and imagination of his role as an artist. Um, actually, I, I have worked with Liu Ding a, lo a lot of times, and we co-curated this Little Movements show. At the time, I was the assistant uh, curator and uh, the, uh, the uh, seventh Shenzhen Sculpture Binali. And for the Shenzhen Sculpture Binali, we began with these inspirations. We proposed that uh, uh, every kind of work has an aesthetic value, and this value can now be con condensed into mere descriptions of, or definitions. So if we, Liu Ding and I and Carol Lu, seek to achieve descriptions or, uh, or definitions, our practice will fall into functional logic. So in the past, uh, Chinese uh, have produced too much work that uh, strives towards the definition. And these ideas of equality and returning to art practice are now very urgent issues for us. And these are not just utopian ideas, but a way of returning to being human, including doubts, indecision, uncertainties, inabilities to describe, and failures. So I, we both think that as a creator or, 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 or uh, art practitioner, we must confront, respect, and understand these things as they are, and not for the sake of perfection. And Liu Ding is not just an artist, he's, he's a, like I said, he's a curator. So he kind of treat art uh, in a very, uh, uh, self-engaged but also uh, um, uh, 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 on reflection-based uh, uh, level. So this question of returning to art practice on the most direct level uh, involves the critic and the curator, like I said. So Liu Ding, as an artist and a curator, he sees art as a way of to confront, to question, and to explore the world. And to return to art practice means for him to return to the time before our questions were defined. And this trouble of posing questions for Chinese artists or critics is that when we make art, we can constantly think about how we formulate these questions. I think this is the same themes lay behind the discussions in the 19s uh, as Chiu Zhi brought, brought up the question, what is experimental art and what is conceptual art? Is conceptual art or ideal art in his article, he said. So today, it has clearly emerged in the present dilemma of artist, artist process, uh, pr practice. And Liu Ding is, kind of, is one of the artists who are interested in the connections between artists, or between artists and the uh, art history, between artists and the context. So for him, these kind of connections is a, 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 a form of, of political, political uh, uh, reflection of art itself. So he brought, brought up this idea of coexistence, which is the, uh, the basis 
of a lot of research and artist, artistic practice today. Uh, I think we can we run out of time. I think I should uh, finish my talk with another piece of video of Liudin's work. I simply uh, appeared in Company Earth. This is a work he uh, he has done in Tate with Carol Yinghua Lu, who is a collaborator of him and his wife, and another uh, curator from Tate Modern. This one. And in this talk, it's actually it's not a convers uh, uh, actual conversation. It's a art. It's an artwork. And this work, Carol Yinghua Lu staged and uh, explained that Liu Ding, the artist Liu Ding, uh, uh, will come a, a little bit late. And she started to introduce Liu Ding's work at first for 40, uh, 5, 15 minutes. And then Liu Ding arrived. He uh, appears not, in, not as an artist Liu Ding, but as Mr. Liu to stage with, to, to, together with Carol Yinghua Lu and uh, uh, Marco Daniel, the curator of the uh, Tate Modern, the three of them then get started to discuss Liudin's practice. I think uh, I can start with the part where Liudin has already arrived. My presentation and following, I would like to invite Marco and Liudin to join me on stage for the discussion. one of Liu Ding's non-public conversations. And you also spent a few days with us in Shenzhen in preparation for our project Little Movements. I, could, I would like to open the discussion this afternoon by asking you how you got to know Liu Ding's practice. Thank you. That's, a, that's an interesting question. It's, a, it's related in some ways, I suppose, to things we have been talking about already, which is um, networks and, and systems of connection. It was through um, other uh, curators and artists who recommended uh, that I uh, get in touch with, uh, uh, with Lillian and in fact with you as, uh, a, as a, a project um, that I was myself uh, engaged in. I think it was actually at the time we were working on the um, Ai Weiwei exhibition on the sunflower seeds and um, it was recommended to me that uh, Liu Ding and you would be people who had um, very interesting insights into his work and so the initial contact that I made came again almost through a kind of third party approach where um, I was primarily interested in finding out from Jürgen about the work of another artist. And um, at the same time, I became very interested in, uh, in his work. And so that is then how I think we, um, you and I, and he started um, having much longer conversations, all about the way in which the art system works, the art world works, the way in which connections between artists um, take place. But seeing that we have um, um, Mr. Uh, Liu here, I would like to ask you, um, how did you first become involved in, uh, interested in Liu Ding's work? Marco, I ask you, how you started to Liu Ding's work and to create a sense of 大家下午好，我今天还是用中文来说。Carol会来帮我来翻译。呃，谢谢马马克的问题。现在我很紧张。嗯，得想一想怎么回答。嗯，Mr. Liu has just said that he will be speaking in Chinese this afternoon. He would like to first thank Marco for his question. 
and he's feeling very nervous now. Uh, this is a interesting question. Actually, I am not familiar with building things. But it always appears in my face. It always appears in my face. For me, his work, I Um, this is a very interesting question for me as well. I don't think I understand who Liu Ding is and what he does. Actually, uh, even though he's always around me, I don't really understand what he makes. Um, um, the reason I said I can't really understand is because it's actually very difficult for me to describe the shape of his practice. It's very hard to summarize his idea and his work in a sentence or in a nutshell. But he has always been telling me, art is politics. The kind of politics that he said, um, that he referred to, seemed to be very different from what we understand as political movement. In his practice, he seemed to always be observing and trying to examine what are the small things around us, the insignificant things around us. He seemed to be always trying to unfold some of the complexity of things for us. He often used the word describe. Um, I might I take a guess that he description, an attempt to describe is the center of his work. But it seems that it's very difficult for us to Describe such an attempt to describe. Um, He's wondering um, what you think about this in building's practice. Um, thank you. Um, that was a very full answer, and you followed it up with a uh, with a good question. I think when I look at um, Yodin's work. There are um, three elements in it that I see very often. There's the role of Yodin himself, there's the role of invited participants, and there's the role of the audience. And the audience is very often absent. Um, very often things happen between the artist and um, somebody that is, has been invited to participate in some way. Um, Claire spoke earlier about delegated performance, and certainly in something like Store, one can see an element of that in that the um, that building works with works that are produced by others, but at the same time there is a very strong uh, element of the artist himself in that. And that often, um, one could almost suggest quite perversely, even in a conversation where the audience is completely included, um, deals with a self-promotion of the artist at the very time that the artist is not present for the audience.
马可刚才的回答是说，他发现刘鼎的创作里通常有三个层次的一个内容。第一个是他包括了一个艺术家这样的一个人；第二个是他包括了被邀请的参与者、合作者；第三个是观众这样的一个角色。但是事情往往是在艺术家和参与的人之间发生，而似乎观众总是缺席的。嗯，所以马可也提到了今天早上。克莱尔所提到的这个把把这个表演转化到别人身上去进行表演，艺术家本身不进行这个表演，嗯，而在刘鼎的商店当中，他也看到了这样的一个元素，就是作品是由其他人来产生的，而艺术家自己呢，很奇怪，总是其实是在既是不在场，但是又总是在，嗯，在。自我的一个推销，把自己推到前面来。呃，谢谢你的观察。呃，据我所，我看到的，我觉得刘鼎经常是把他的创作拟人化和他的研究也进行拟人化。From his observation, um, he found. That Ludin always try to personify、um, his works as well as his research, the kind of methodologies that he employed in his research. 呃，我也跟他合作过几次，他总是希望呢把合作者呢的最大的潜力发挥起来。I have also collaborated with him、uh, in a number of projects, and I what I experienced was that he always try to. Initiate the collaborator. Try to activate the initiation of the collaborator. 但是呢，他的工作的过程中总是很强权。But during the process of working with him, um, I also felt that he's always playing a very dominant role. 呃，总是控制很多。A lot of control that he exercises. 就是这样让我很困惑。This confused me. 这样的合作，一方面他又很希望有非常大的给对象，给对象有非常大的这个空间和主动性，但是这么样的一个控制，那到底是应该怎么样呢 ？This confused me because in this kind of collaboration, um, he did intend to provide space for the collaborator, but at the same time, he controls so much. Thanks. Stop here. We don't have time for the whole piece. Um, this is the uh, Shenzhen Biennale we co-curated uh, last year, and Liu Ding is. I think Liu Ding is the artist who, uh, who for the very first time in China brought up this idea of art practice as a political practice. But not a pr uh, political pr uh, political practice in the sense of a, a revolution, but what he interested in is the, is the connection, and namely a subjective uh, interaction with the connections, the connection between artists or art practice, and the historical context and the social context, and 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 of course of their uh, of the artists of other artists. So in this kind of form, Liu Ding developed a, a, a form of reflect, reflection, a reflection uh, which is vividly uh, 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 directed towards our uh, Chinese reality, but also art reality. I think I, I should finish my, uh, my talk with one of Liu Ding's uh, claims. Liu Ding said, I quote, uh, I believe coexistence derives from political evolution. Coexistence, this form of being together, is a container for relevance. And coexistence offers conditions for committing crimes, but it also provides clues for inspection. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Wei, for your very interesting insights.
into these works and into the reflections. Um, before we open up the discussion to everybody, I just want to ask you one yeah. question. Um, it is, um, as I remarked in your presentation, this, there was this shift from um, the performance works in the 90s or the concerns of the artists in the 90s or in the, even in the 80s with Charles Chan, mm -hmm. uh, where the performances were more um, turned toward an outward world and more like reactions than reflections um, to the situation of the young or the concern of the young artists uh, which you give us an inspection, uh, where the reflection is getting more a self-reflection, a reflection about the reflection, a performance within the performance, and it's kind of uh, it's kind of closed in this. I mean, the artist is at the center, and the art system is at the center, and it's kind of within this. Uh, system. Yeah. So uh, I, I want just to ask about this kind of inner reflection. Can you do? You, can you explain or do? You, why uh, is this increasing tendency towards the self-reflection? Yeah. This is the first question, mm. and then also the second one. Um, what do you think? You talked about, or I mean, um, the last work we saw in of Yodin about the politics Issue. Yeah. So what can these reflections of these young artists bring towards the world outside art? Mm -hmm. I think the first thing I have to explain is that the pieces I am showing to you, I share with you, um, are only some examples of their career. I think it's not the the only uh, uh, explanation of their, their artistic claims. Um, of course, for Liu for his practice, the, uh, the uh, reflection uh, plays a central role. But for some other artists like Chen Zhou or for his fellow artist Yu Hunlei, even Li Lan, I think um, there's always this, there always been this instinct, this kind of instinct of, of art practice that dominates in their practice. Sometimes, I think the perception of the artist, uh, again, uh, uh, in front of the art system or the, the, the context or, or, or the industry, uh, is, uh, we cannot just define it as, as, a, as a, 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 a direct uh, response to, to the context. But it is, it sometimes it's, it's instinct entangled uh, uh, interaction with uh, the uh, the so-called context, the social, the social and cultural and, and artist context. Um, I think your question about the, 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 the difference between, uh, between response and reflection, um, I think this is something, I think it, could, it could be very philosophical, but it's something if that res response to, to your circumstance or to, to, to the atmosphere is a subjective response. And then it could open up a possibility to discuss uh, the context in in art practice. So from so the internal uh, there will be internal observation of of these artists who uh, who that who do not just only um, only distinctly uh, respond to the to the context but also reflect on the context. So there's a small gap between this response and reflection and. To 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 uh, uh, to conquer this this gap, I think it's their it's their creative energy and their creative uh, uh, impulse uh, uh, in in art. And the um, the second question is about uh, how the uh, younger generation deals with the uh, outside world, right? Yes, because it's kind of like. Uh the reflection is kind of a labyrinth of reflection, yeah. I mean, kind of a, a mirror cabinet or something. Um, I, I think this is 
quite a hard question for me to, to, to answer because I'm not the artist here uh, that I mentioned here. Um, um, I can I can maybe uh, name a, an exa example of Chen Zhou. After he shoot this this video, my favorite artist Yu Hongli, he started to work, uh, to work on, a, on another product called I'm not 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 Chen Zhou. Um, he uh, I think he like I said he senses kind of problematics of who, to whom you speak with your work and how to character characterize and understand the connections, relations, and relations between uh, artists and between their different approach, approaches to art. But in, in the new work that I am now not, uh, I'm now not Chen Zhou, this work, he, uh, he, he uh, opposed himself with all his confusions of the world, of the society, of the cosmos, but not only the art system. So I think there's a different approach to art, different kinds of art, artists, artists, and it's not about just one piece of work. It's about their career, in in which they develop their thinking of art practice and the relations between art practice and the context. Yeah. Maybe yeah. mm -hmm. directly open to the public now. Um, yeah, if I may. Uh, you don't need that. No, I don't think I <laughs> Um, I'd like to venture a hypothesis to respond to what you're saying. Because um, you're sort of putting in antagonism the fact that they're reflecting upon themselves, and how does that relate to some sort of social context? So I'd like to venture a hypothesis and see what you think of this idea. There's this idea of microcosm and macrocosm, which is very common in Oriental culture, Indian as well especially very old, where if you explore fully even your body, mm -hmm. you will have a map of the universe with mm -hmm. everything it contains, every form of knowledge that ever was, and by really knowing this, you can have a reflection and impact on what goes on around. Mm -hmm. So that, I would venture that that would be what they're doing in a certain sense. So body as a, uh, uh, a container of of the cosmos, like yes. I said. Yeah. Um, yes, I, I can understand what you think of this, but uh, there's a, I think there's a risk to look at things like this, because if you want to look at things like this, you, you will face the uh, reality that art could fall into the old modernism, uh, modernist discourse. Um, and I think for the artists, for the Chinese artists, it could be very urgent to reflect how is the, our connection with the modern, modern, modernist history. And then it's, of course, the artists, if they work very instinctively, they will always think their body, at most of the time, as a container of, of the spiritual world, or of the cosmos. But we, if we talk about the contemporaneity, if we talk about the, 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 the very nature of, our, of the art practice today, I think the reflection of these body uh, images could be very uh, keen to, to not only to Chinese artists, but to, to all the artists who have been deal, dealing with these uh, issues uh, for a long time. Yeah. Well, definitely, this practice is not just oriental. Right? No. I think that the, your title is extremely interesting and exactly what the uh, performance artists are you include tonight um, it would be pretty much parallel perfectly well and I look at the title performance as a form and another session form of reflection and this actually we miss one part which is essence and then let's come to the common I would have. Uh, according to my very limited observation of the uh, younger generation of performance art, and it seems to be essence is absent, a form of uh, action. It's circulated outside of themselves. Mm. And the presence of their, whatever their awareness of their being, of, of their body, mm. I didn't really see um, any of them. The same strength 
even similar, even close mm -hmm. uh, to the strength that we actually uh, discovered or feel, felt when we saw um, the earlier piece by Zhang Huan mm -hmm. Manu Ni, mm -hmm. back to the beginning of the 1990s. Mm -hmm. And then these group of performance artists, the body was the only means that they had. Mm -hmm. And then they, apart from their body, they just barely had the money for their food and bread and rice. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, the, 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 the explosion of the awareness of the body you know, becomes the language and the sense. Mm -hmm. So somehow, I think, you know, I would like to understand from you better mm -hmm. uh, what will make these works valuable mm -hmm. if they're only four and without any sense. This is a very difficult question. And Chen Yang for sure is a very sophisticated critic who has been actually through the big wave of the consumption of Chinese art after the 2000. And uh, I think you got quite familiar with the big language that you mentioned and all these mythic figures that the art market has has, has been shaping. Um, I think for for artists like Zhang Huan or Ma Liuming or Zhu Ming who live in the East Village, in their work, they are in their work. Uh, are, I think are all kind of con connection embedded. Not only the uh, like you said the intensity of the body, but it is also something uh, about the spiritual uh, development of artists. Something about the social confrontation, something about uh, their relations uh, with each other and who live in the uh, uh, East Village. And all these connections and channels are all included in their work. So that, that makes, it makes things interesting because, uh, for example, after Zhang Huan arrived in New York, he started to uh, bring up this, this problematic the identity very vividly in front of the American uh, 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 audience. And that time, he kind of uh, was focused. Uh, 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 he, he, in large, in large, in large, in large uh, uh, one facet of his, of his practice. And to uh, to, to establish a kind of artistic identity in New York and in, in another cultural context. But for the young Chinese artists, these identity problems are no, no, long, no, no longer, let's say, essential to their work. And as you, you, you may know that all these Chinese younger generations are far more uh, experienced and far more uh, sophisticated than the older generations. They have already uh, absorbed a lot of uh, Western, let's say, Western art historical uh, discourses, discussions. And of course, for them, all these issues that Zhang, the Zhang Huan gener, uh, uh, generation has generated could be just a part of their thinking, could be just a, a, a complement of their production, but it's not not any more uh, essential to their thinking of the contemporary to their own way of how to figure out another connection with the the uh, the, the, the meanings that you, you have mentioned the, the the essence of meanings that you that mentioned I think this is this is a form of reflection this is a form where you uh, uh, you you actually open up yourself to the reality not just on to, to art, art itself, but to the reality uh, in which all these kinds of possibilities and imaginations could arise from. Yeah. Uh, may I just add, yeah. uh, may I just add that the artists nowadays are in a much more safe position than before. These artists are in a very, very good position at the moment in, in society. Also concerning their non- Many artists are not anymore struggling so much 
Yeah, there are artists who are struggling a lot in, in China as mm. well. But these artists are not struggling. They have belonged to a, to a, a quite safe uh, positioned uh, group of people in society. But on the other hand, mm. it's, it's, it's very important that they, they now deal with other topics. Mm. I just wanted to say that, for example, Li Ran, I just met him three days ago. And when, he, when he's talking, and he's, he's a fantastic performer. He's an incredible good performer. And I would say that he's in between these two positions because he's, he's, he's performing in different roles, but not to play. He's questioning himself. Yeah. And he's just performing another performance than they, we are used to, to the role the old performers used to play. And this is was wonderful to, for me to see. He's really one, of, uh, really gifted in these different roles, which he really plays not to play, mm -hmm. but to to research really these the questions. For example, you mentioned the Cezanne. Uh, mm -hmm. he's, he was uh, uh, giving a lecture in a in in, a, in an exhibition space, mm -hmm. and he plays. It, Cezanne, but he plays also the reflection of Cezanne and pl uh, plays uh, a journalist who, who tries to explain the Cezanne. And this is so interesting. If you hear him saying with the voices, the different voices and the different ways, mm -hmm. he's really performing, but mm -hmm. in a very sincere way. So mm -hmm. I think this is also different from Liu Ding, for mm -hmm. example. Mm -hmm. it's, it's another yeah. performance, yeah. way of doing performance. Yeah, and also the, uh, the, the, the reception of, it, of, it, of this work, the Beyond Geography, this work. Mm -hmm. Particularly very uncorrect. Yeah. Uh, this work. It's, of course, the work is politically not correct <laughs> at all, it's, it's like but it's interestingly, critics or curators from your Western world, <laughs> I, uh, have, I have, have seen this work as, as a, a, another, another, another uh, confrontation with the colonialism. I think this is very interesting because Li Yan's work shows this quality of the openness as, uh, to, uh, to, to uh, reflect on the form of, in German say, uh, Offenbarung. A form that you know it, uh, opens up a different, a lot of very different possibilities in which you can just find out one that is meaningful for you. This is kind of thinking of the encounters. This is kind of thinking of the, a little bit romantic, but also very philosophical, philosophical because it's, it it touches or it. Uh, slides on, on, on the on the uh, philosophic thinking of the the I and you, yeah. as which is also my dissertation uh, theme. I think this, this is could be very interesting that the meaning is not would not be uh, produced by the artist itself, also not by by the audience itself, but by these encounters. Ja, ich habe eine Frage in Deutsch. Ja. Und zwar, wie präsent sind in China Performance und freie Kunst im öffentlichen Raum, in Public Space? Äh, ja, eine schwere Frage, weil ja, also in, in, in China da gibt es keinen richtigen öffentlichen Raum, sagen wir, wie in, in Deutschland oder so. Also, als also dieser Unterschied zwischen dem privaten und dem öffentlichen Raum ist so unklar, dass man vielleicht noch Zeit brauche, bräuchte, um das noch so aufzubauen. Also ich glaube, ähm, ähm, in den äh, 90 er Jahren, als Stamm von Mario Ming äh, äh, die Arbeit machten, damals war die Situation schon ganz krass, weil, weil es war richtig verboten von der Stadt. Die Polizei kam jeden Tag fast, wenn sie, wenn sie einfach die Ausstellung da realisierte. Aber jetzt, ich glaube, es geht nicht nur um den öffentlichen Raum, 
wo die, wo die arbeiten können und müssen. Es geht um, wirklich um, um den, sagen wir, die ja, künstlerische Realität, in der sie arbeiten. Also Öffentlichen du kannst natürlich auf der Straße einfach ein Performance geben. Die Polizei kann auch, aber es wird nicht verboten. Es wird nicht, äh, nicht äh, zensiert, werden, zensiert oder so. Es wird nur, nur beobachtet von der Regierung, ja, okay, das Volk reagiert auf unsere Realität auf diese Weise genug. Also du wirst vielleicht auch ins Gefängnis genommen, aber das ist was anderes, oder? Das hat nicht so viel, zu mir, viel mit mir zu tun mit, mit der Kunst. Ich, glaub, ich weiß, wie es für Deutschland, IWW ist immer da, der so, sowas macht. Und der auch, ich glaube, in Deutschland oder in Europa schon ganz... Äh, schreckliche Börse, Börsegeschichten über die chinesische Regierung geredet haben. Aber das Problem ist, I will waste a Praxis ist immer noch, es kümmert sich auch nicht darum, um die sehr begrenzte soziale Realität. Er bekommt sich auch um die äh, 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 künstlerische Realität. Nur in einem, sagen wir, in einer Erscheinung, ja, uh, yeah, Appearance, dass, dass er als ein Human Rights Kämpfer beschrieben wird. Aber das ist, finde ich, das zwei Sachen eigentlich. Ja. Ja, kann ich auf die nächste Frage? Ja. <lacht> Nochmal auf Deutsch, weil mein Englisch ja. nicht so gut ist, aber ja. ich kann es auf Englisch ja. Das verstehe ich. Ja. Wie, wie viel gibt es äh, so Kunst im Kontext, also trotz spezifischer und raumbezogener Arbeiten, wie zum Beispiel die Sachen mit dem Eisbahn, also ein Beispiel? <lacht> Mit dem Eisbahn? An dieser Mauer, die Leute mit dem Eis. Ah, 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 das okay. war ein Beispiel auch dafür. Ja. Also, also das interessiert mich besonders so Kunst im Kontext. Ja. Im Kontext. Ja. Arbeit entwickeln. Also, in Kontext, also wir haben hier eigentlich einen praktischen. So, was ist da? Jetzt ist das noch da. Äh, Hui Ying Ya. Äh, sie hat. Ja, she has uh, a, a very interesting space in that so-called context in, in the Hutton area, which is called the uh, home shop, uh, which has been dealing with the, so, uh, the local uh, community for years. They, that, they don't very, or they are not very interested in produce artworks, but to uh, produce a communication and interaction with the community. Um, and as we can see, there are all these kind of uh, Practices of like the uh, aero fabric in Beijing. They also based in they also based in Hutong in the old city area. It's, I think there are only one, or two or three of them that 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 keeps keep doing this. But I think the question is still emerges, namely, even though you are doing all these kind of works, all these kind of uh, interactions with the local community, what is your role for art? Is still, I think the question is still open. We cannot answer it now because the social social context is changing and it is ever changing and faster and faster. But I think there's we have to uh, uh, to to carefully think about it. If you your space or your practice is only uh, is only directed to the social context, would be there's a moment would be a would be a moment there that that is kind of practice all become hollowness because the context you are working with change and it disappear. And I think you can you should ask maybe Hen Ya can give us a, 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 some other uh, thinking about about this uh, kind of practice, but yeah this is my, my answer. Mm. Mm. Da gibt es ja so einen schönen Satz yeah. von der Bank of America yeah. in Hongkong, der da auf LED rüberkommt, mm. real life never stop. Und es ändert sich ja alles für uns auch. Ja. Das ist ja das Tolle am Leben. Ja. Maybe. Ja, dann kommt jetzt noch eine dritte Frage. Ja. Let me close up. Last question. Kannst du bitte noch was zur, zu den, zur Kunstsituation in Hongkong sagen? Nein. Ich bin ein totaler Außenseiter der Hongkonger Künstler. 
wir haben gerade darüber diskutiert, ne? also die, die werden immer konservativ und äh, ja, da geht es nicht zu weit. Das ist ein extra Thema, das ist ein riesiger Koffer, den man da aufmacht. Ja, ja. 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 Also, ja. Koffer, Hongkong muss dann anders aufgemacht werden. Ja. Sorry. Hongkong ist ein Ja, 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 Bulgarian philosopher um, based between Sofia and Berlin. In, it's not taking place here, but it's taking place in the uh, HZT, which is in the Ufer Studios in Wedding, which is a part of UDK, uh, and it's actually performing dancing department. So there will also be a workshop, but this is not public. <laughs> and uh, so it would be nice to see you again. Yeah, there. I strongly recommend this because yes. for sure it's very, really very interesting. Mm -hmm. About uh, body yeah. and uh, wandering know. bodies. And this is Zhao Chuan's yes. work. Yeah, and yeah. it was really nice to have this, this inside into the M exhibition because yeah. actually I didn't knew that too before. Much, yeah. uh, not, not much about so it was really special to get this. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.